Good morning, my name is Dave and uh, I'm interested in uh, prospecting. I love the YouTube videos from a bunch of guys. So I'll put up a link, some, some information there. Um, at any rate, I have a cabin in the California desert and there's lots of gold mines around and it's fun to goof around and I've panned a little bit in the desert and um, it's a real pleasure. I have no interest in mining and I have zero interest in manufacturing anything so that's not the purpose of this video. I built this table to see if I could uh, separate gold from the game material and from the black sands. I actually haven't taken it out to the desert yet. I've this is like the third iteration of the table, so I'm kind of trying to make it better and better. The, uh, so, so this winter, I went out to the beach here in Los Angeles and I collected a bucket of black sand, the real heavy, fine stuff. And I began the process of trying to separate it from um, gold that I extracted from uh, uh, Shane's uh, impossible uh, pay dirt that's uh, kleshgold.com and um, I had a lot of fun it's really an interesting kind of engineering project to um, to try to develop a machine to separate gold so that's why I'm here talking to you I'd like to show you this table and how it works and uh, the progress that I've made on it um, uh, this is uh, lots of experimentation. Um, as I said, I had three, two previous versions of this which uh, worked, but not the, really the way I wanted it to, and they had other um, issues. For me, the machine has to be portable. I have to be able to put it in the back of my pickup truck. It has to work on a uh, recirculating water supply because it's uh, desert conditions, and it has to be battery operated. So um, that's what I've done. And in this video, I'll show you the table, but I'll also show you uh, how it works extracting um, 100 milligrams from a cup of the black sand weighing around uh, um, 750 grams of the nasty stuff. So before we get started with the table, I've weighed out um, roughly 100 milligrams a very fine gold. Okay, and the way I'll do it is I'll add that gold to this cup of um, black beach sand that I got from a local LA beach during the winter when the storms bring down the heavy material, including a little bit of gold. I found, um, you know, some few milligrams per kilogram of the black sand in certain parts of the beach during the winter. Anyway, we'll add that to there. So there's 100 milligrams of fine, difficult gold. And um, in this horrible black beach sand. So first, let's take a look at the table itself. The table is made from uh, plywood that has um, two coats of primer and two coats of uh, top coat. There's a water bar comes along the top. There's two discharge ports for the uh, gold and the heavy material. Uh, this is number. This is the number one port. This is the number two port. There's a discharge port where the material where the waste material goes the tailings there's a container for a water supply it's a recirculating system and I use um, a, a nice squirt of jet dry in there under use so um, the number one port is on the right number two ports on the left the table shakes, the way it shakes is through this uh, mechanical stage down here and um, 
there's a top board and a bottom board. And the top board is supported by four aluminum uh, 6061T6 uh, pieces of uh, bar stock, flat stock, 16 of an inch thick. A motor moves the table. There's uh, an arm that couples an eccentric uh, motor coupler to the top of the table. And when I turn the table on, you'll see how that works. And here's the, here's the other side of the motion stage. So you can see the motor. There's the eccentric mechanism and um, the arm that couples the motor to the top of the table. And that's really it. The base is uh, sturdy. And it has to be because the shaking motion of the table will shake the uh, bejeebers out of the base if it's not uh, well constructed. The table is driven from a portable battery power supply. There are two um, LiPo batteries in here, total of 20 amp hours at, uh, what, 12 volts? So, you know, about 250 watt hours of energy storage. In operation, the table takes roughly 30 um, watts, so the battery will last eight hours in the field. Uh, there's a master you can turn down, turn off the motion and the battery. So there's two um, motor controllers in here, PWM motor controllers. One drives the pump, the other drives the motor on the table, and there's a meter that uh, monitors the battery. Battery voltage, uh, the current consumption, the uh, pa instantaneous power consumption, and the total energy consumed in watt hours. Um, this, I, I can adjust the, unfortunately on the video, <laughs> the, the sync rate of the video is roughly the same as the, uh, uh, refresh rate on the LED. But anyway, this is measuring, this says 8.2 volts right now. And then that's for the pump and this one's for the motor. And right now that says 8.5 volts. Anyway, so you get the idea. And uh, there's a charging port that I built into it over here. And, oh, it takes a couple of hours to re recharge the battery, roughly speaking. There are many other details I'll cover in another video, but uh, just to be brief, the motor is a 12 volt motor. It's a 30, rated at 35 watts. I've run this table, as you see it now, for about 30 hours total. I don't see any degradation in every, anything. The, uh, the flexures, this may not be the best way to make these flexures, but it works uh, in a prototype anyway. It just epoxied to the wood. And I'll paint this eventually, but right now it's unpainted. Um, phosphor bronze would probably, or you know, spring steel or phosphor bronze might be a better material, obviously. And um, there's a way to level the table in the field. The top of the table is a sheet of neoprene rubber quarter of an inch thick and I've um, 
used a hand router to machine in these uh, grooves. And I've made a, a number of these um, for testing different ideas. This one is working quite well, so we'll operate the table with this one today. Underneath is just the plywood, painted plywood. And you can see that there are three steps in the table. Each step is an eighth of an inch high and they're placed in a particular way to try to reject um, the material in stages um, coming down here. And that works uh, pretty well. So here's the tailings bucket. When this fills up, it's just dumped. Um, the uh, number, the bucket for the number two cons and the number one cons. There's the bilge pump that um, is uh, used to pump the water on the table, of course. And there's a filter below it. Without the filter, the uh, water bar gets plugged up because it's recirculating. So I think it's a um, 12 mesh filter I've used on the bottom of that, and that keeps the holes in the water bar from getting plugged with uh, junk. So I'd like to acknowledge the work of uh, Jason at uh, Mount Baker Mining and Metals. This table is very much a adaptation from his larger tables, from their larger tables. This one happens to be one by three feet, and my target uh, rate was uh, 50 kilograms per hour and I can get that um, easily even with the black sand so I think in the field I'll probably be able to double that anyway it's a big shout out to Jason and the folks there at MBMM LLC um, for uh, you know some great ideas so the way the table is set up is you notice these flexures are set at an angle and that angle is 18 degrees and they're set back at an angle of 18 degrees. So when they move, they move up like this and it launches the gold in that direction. So the heavy stuff moves that way. And um, the, the fact that it's rotated 18 degrees pushes the, the uh, heavy material up into the water bar and that's quite important for a small table and these grooves are set at a 21 degree angle and uh, from experimentation that seems to be you know close to optimum okay so here's the black sand that I've mixed with the gold it has a hundred milligrams of gold and we'll see how much we can get back through the whole process and this weighs about uh, uh, 0.75 kilograms, or about a pound and a half. The light colored material that you see here is um, very heavy sulfides and um, they go along pretty much with the gold. There isn't a lot you can do in a small table to get rid of these really heavy um, sulfides, probably lead sulfide. And um, you know larger tables do better than that because you can have more distance washing but here, you know, you live with what you get. It works very well, and you can always run the material a second time. All right, so I let the table clear a couple of minutes. I'll pull out the um, containers containing the number one con. 
there's the number one cons and uh, the number two cons right there so if I were in the field I'd probably run the number two cons back through the table after, at the end of the day or whatever but for now I'll just um, get these uh, I'll finish the separation we'll do that inside so here's the uh, device I'm going to use to do the uh, final separation. I won't cover that in this vi video, but it's a kind of an interesting um, modification of a Miller table. It actually shakes, and you'll see that operation in a second. All right, so the way this thing works is there's water, laminar flow down here, again, a pump, so forth, and there's grooves to catch the gold and the um, lighter material will be pushed down by the water and then there's a vibration action which tends to send the gold that way so it helps to separate the gold from the lighter material. Here I'm pointing at the gold being separated and you can also see the band of uh, sulfides, the lighter colored, really heavy, fine sulfides. And I can load the table up um, with quite a lot of material. Here I've sped up the video by a factor of three, just for the fun of it. You can watch the separation happening. The gold falls into those grooves and it stays in there. And I get 95% recovery, even with these heavy black sands, heavy sulfide-laden sands. So there's the separation. That's what was left after I snuffered uh, all the gold out of the grooves. I've lost some really fine stuff down there, but I'm not going to worry about it. We'll just weigh this up. I'll let it dry out and we'll weigh that up and see what we got out of the number one port. And there's the dried gold. And I'll get it into something and weigh it. So there's the weight of the um, material that came out of the number one port. It's uh, 80 milligrams. Here's what I got out of the number two cons. And here's the result. From the number two port, we got uh, six milligrams, plus or minus. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, the results are very encouraging to me. We got about 80% recovery round trip through all of that processing with very heavy and difficult uh, black sands and about um, oh I don't know 10% or so uh, ended up in the uh, number two port which uh, I'm completely happy with uh, given the uh, given the material so if you enjoyed the video please subscribe and uh, I'll make some more and we'll have fun with uh, machines and desert prospecting. Thanks a bunch for watching.